LOL, my dumbass was so excited that we were able to make these buildings. We completely forgot to put a bathroom in, which is definitely something you should neglect as a as a zoo curator. Put a bathroom in for your guests. They need to go to the bathroom. Because, like, if not, they'll just go in trash cans or, you know, somewhere else all over the zoo. And it'll be disgusting. So, yeah, don't do that. Don't forget a bathroom, guys. Be, be better in the game than I am. Hello everyone, my name is OxyM17 and welcome back to another Zootorial. Today I'm going to show you guys something pretty cool. Today I'm going to show you how to make an exhibit without using any fences. It's going to be an exhibit made completely with natural barriers, null barriers, uh, mountains, things like that, rocks, that are going to keep the animals away from the guests without having to put a fence in the middle. I'm not saying fences are a bad thing. Obviously right here, these fences are very nice, but I'm going to show you how to do it, um, I guess, without that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into terrain. The stamping tool is the easiest to work with. So right now I have it set at like, we'll go 10 and 20. So 10 meters deep and 20 meters wide. Uh, we're going to start building over here. You can use the X tool to rotate these how you please, but sometimes it gets a little wonky when it's not synced to the world axis. Um, so just be mindful of that. Put that here. Just one is really all you need because from there we'll go into flattening the terrain. Make that real big. And this is what you're going to do. You're just going to flatten the exhibit to a pit in the ground. And then we're going to work out from there. And then the exhibit we're making today is Indian Rhinoceros. I figured that would be pretty cool. Guests don't often get to get very close to Indian Rhinos because, I mean, they're massive. And they're kind of dangerous, like most rhinoceros. Um, but they're also super endangered, and we want to stress conservation in the zoos. So that's something cool to look out for. So we'll do something like that. right? We'll extend this back area out a little bit more. Maybe this can be where we put their, their little house. From there, I take the pull tool, like so, and I pull up along the mountains. So basically what you're exploiting is the fact that some animals can't climb, some animals can't swim. Uh, Indian rhinoceros can swim, so creating a barrier with just water wouldn't work, but Indian rhinos can't climb. Uh, conversely, uh, an animal that can climb but can't swim, like a gorilla or a chimpanzee, because they, uh, great apes cannot swim in this game, I don't believe. You can make a moat, like you'd see in a real zoo, and it actually would be pretty effective, which I think is pretty cool. So this is going to be not a huge cliff side here, but we do want to make it solid enough that it kind of wraps around, like, the border of the viewing area. So I'm thinking right here is where we're going to put the path for the guests. Uh, and to do that, we're going to put... Uh, some rocks in after we smooth this stuff out. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. We're going to smooth these back edges out a little bit. That's a weird little hump there in the back, but that's okay. Smooth these back areas out. We're going to be adjusting this back wall later when we, when we put the um, staff gate in, but for now, this is like the shell of our exhibit. So from here, we are going to put just a little thing in for water because rhinos do like to swim so we'll put a little nice little curvy patch of water for them boom cool so they have water hopefully they have enough space so what we do here indian rhinoceros live in asia so we'll go continent asia and their biome is temperate and grassland. We're going to turn Asia off because we need to put rocks in. So with this, what you do is you take these $30 rocks here that you see. These big ones like I was telling you about in the last uh, in the last tutorial. These huge rocks right here. And you take them, hit the Z key, do a quick rotate, push them into the wall. And then you repeat this process. Do a little rotation. Make sure they're in the wall. You're going to do this for the end entirety of this path here and I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, in a second when I'm done with all this. All right so here you have it. This is the kind of rock wall you want to look for. Just these $30 rocks rotated and placed and slid into the wall. This will do an effective job of keeping this animal in uh, 
in captivity without having to worry about your guests getting attacked. This does not just apply to Indian rhinoceros, by the way. This can be any animal that can't climb rocks. Uh, you will be able to contain it with this. But this looks a little strange, so we're going to try to make this look a little bit nicer. So from here, you can take other rocks, $20 rocks, $10 rocks, $5 rocks, anything your little heart desires, and you can add a little bit of detail here. So we're going to take a couple of these $20 rocks. Again, just rotate them a little bit drop them into the ground, drag them back, make them look a little bit more natural. If we were doing this for something like wolves or cats, I definitely would not recommend adding uh, rocks that would make it easier for them to climb up, because that's kind of what we're doing right now. But obviously rhinos can't climb like that. When you are making uh, barrier list exhibits for carnivores, like cats or wolves or bears or anything like that, that you know can climb, be very, very careful of how you're putting things. Generally, I like to just leave those kinds of animals in a much deeper pit they can't jump out of, but we're not working on that today. We're working on rhinos. Perhaps in another video, if you guys are interested, I can show you how to make a fenceless habitat for something like that too, but we'll see how this one goes. So, just like slide things over, make it look, make it look, you know, nice to your heart's content, you know? because that's what's important, that you like the exhibits that you're building. I will stress that forever, that you think it looks good. It's, as I've said before, it's really easy to compare yourself to other zoos, other content creators, you know, anyone who can do this stuff really well, really quickly. Uh, don't stress out if you can't do that. This game has a very steep learning curve and takes a while to get good at. Um, yeah. So, doesn't look all that fancy, but again, we can fix that. Going to sculpting, we're gonna, nope, not flatten. Nope, nope, nope. We're going to smooth the surface here. I'm just sort of rapidly clicking to smooth this terrain out a little bit. <coughs> Apologies. Smooth that terrain out. And then we can add some plants. So there is the little rock border there. We'll go back into nature. We'll go to plants and they do live in Asia. So we will go continent Asia. We're going to go to terrain really quick and remove every piece of long grass we can find. So I just maxed the, um, I maxed the tool out to 20 and I put short grass in everywhere because uh, I've found that when you do terrain modification, long grass becomes tough to find, especially once you start mixing stuff into the terrain, like rocks and trees and, you know, habitat buildings and things like that. So all short grass. A solid starting point. So like I said, we will go into nature and baobab trees, not quite what we're looking for. It's never the vibe I get. Hmm. Himalayan birch. I happen to like these trees quite a bit. I feel like I say that about like every tree I make in this game. It's just true though. I like a lot of trees, people. So you can put some of these along the border, uh, and you can do that with literally anything. You could do holly, you could do the ivies if you um, wanted to decorate with stuff like that. I really hate placing vines in ivy, so we're not even going to bother with that. Uh, they don't live in Japan, so we're not going to do that. Yeah. Bengal bamboo, that would be a pretty good one to border this with. And we'll lower that a little bit. Four meters, two meters. So you can do the um, the wide pieces to make them almost look like fencing, which does look pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to go with the individuals for the moment. We'll stick some azaleas in. I know cherry blossoms uh, aren't really native to India, I don't think. But I think having broken trees in a rhinoceros enclosure is really good. They have something to rub up on. Um, and that'll be beneficial for them. It's a little form of enrichment. I don't know if they actually do that in this game. But, you know, it's just something I like to put in. 
I like these reed stalks a lot. I think I we I showed it off a lot during the flamingo habitat build. I just I really like these. So we'll place a few right at the water's edge. Okay. We're a little limited on trees uh, for this particular particular creature. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Oh, excuse me. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how much they're gonna want. Uh, so we can start kind of small, uh, and then work our way up from there if they need it. We can go back into rocks, we can turn the Asia filter off, go into temperate, and again, hit the X key and slide down. Looks a little bit more natural. I always say that, I don't mean it to be, like, judgmental if you just place them. I just think sometimes they look strange and out of place. So, X, lower, and then we'll take more rocks and we'll kind of cover around that, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, looking good. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. We're going to stick a shelter in there. Again, we're going to be lazy and we're going to make a pre-built one because I'm not particularly the best at it. I really like the way the classic shelters look. Um, but these are Asian animals, so I'm thinking even if it's it's a little bit heavy on the Japanese influence, but I think we might go with the Asia one. Mm. The basic shelters seem just so tiny, though. They also kind of oddly scream rhino, funny enough. I don't know why. Like, yeah, that seems like Rhinoceros stable, if you ask me. So we'll take that, and we'll actually stick it right over here. Actually, I do want to lower that down, just so we know they can get inside it. Back into habitat. Beds and shelters, extra large bedding. It's nice, it's shaded. These guys might want some heaters, because India's pretty hot. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I kind of want to give them a nice area where they can like run around in the mud almost, but I'm not, again, I'm a little worried about it. I don't want to put too many trees in um, and make them go, go crazy here. So we're going to take some soil, we're going to drop this down in size quite a bit. We'll go light soil around most of the exhibit. We are going to add some, a little bit more topography here to make it look a little, a little fancier and not just like it's this flat hole that they have to live in. We will take some rock and we'll put it along the edge here. Our tool is a little big for this. I would probably reduce the size of my painting tool. That would be a smart decision just so you get the sides and not so much of the grass. Um, then we'll go all heavy soil over here because this is where the guests are going to be looking. Do some uh, rough rock up here. It's light rock. Okay, so it's looking a little bit better. This is looking more like a rhinoceros enclosure. Okay, it's got it's big. It's got open space. Um, we'll go in here to terrain a little bit. Do, 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 do. Pull. Actually, we'll reduce that and we'll go roughen. Yeah, we'll kind of throw this area off by roughing it up a little bit, making it not even. We'll go back into painting. <coughs> Light soil, again, just get rid of all that uh, short grass, or long grass rather, because I'm not entirely confident that they're going to love it. Throw some short grass in. Put a little sand there by the edge of the water. Yeah, I'm just sort of clicking rapidly and sprinkling uh, sprinkling this terrain stuff in. So now we're going to make the keeper entrance. And the keeper entrance is a little bit interesting how I like to do these things. So how we're going to do it is we're going to make this part the keeper entrance. We go to terrain, we go to flatten to surface, 
because most zoos, I believe, come already flat. So we'll just flatten that to there. Perfect, perfect. And now we need to start making barriers. This is the only point where you will use an actual fence. The only reason why I say that is because that is how I like to contain my animals. Um, you could use rocks to cover the border as well. I prefer to use the fence just because I think that kind of looks nice. It looks more realistic to me. Um, and then we will go to barriers again. We'll go to habitat gate. Sometimes it's a little sensitive with terrain, so just be careful. That's what you're going to be working with. Oh, nope. Lower that a little bit. Now, to cover this, we're going to go back into terrain. We're going to use our pull tool. We're going to pull directly up and around the fence itself. Now, it would only let you pull to a certain minimum height over the fence. So this is what you're going to be left with every time you make one of these arches. So what you do is you go here, that barrier, select all of these, and just raise it up. Make sure nothing is sticking out, and then boom, you have a nice little area for your keepers to get inside. Go to terrain, raise it enough, there we go. Go to smooth, and then smooth it all out. So your keepers can get inside and your rhinos cannot get outside or whatever animal you choose to put in. This same method for the keeper gate works with carnivores um, and anything that can climb. I know I've said that like this exact exhibit design isn't applicable to all species. This gate is. I have yet to have a problem with animals escaping from the, um, from the wall here. However, the barrier status will decrease significantly faster over time because you only have the one barrier. So to continue the barriers, we click here, we click Null Barrier, and we go around the edge of the exhibit. So we're going to try to see if we can keep this in a little bit so we can decorate the back end without the rhinos, uh, without it affecting their, um, without it affecting their overall plant coverage. The inspector keeps arriving at my zoo. There's like two exhibits, people. Relax. So now we can go to curved. Mm, do we want to curve it yet? Mm, maybe not yet. Maybe we'll go here, then curve it a bit. Yeah. One thing you want to be wary of when making an exhibit like this is where you're putting the null barrier. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Bingo. Now, here we have a full, complete habitat, Habitat 3. What you want to be careful of when placing a null barrier is sometimes when you place it, you'll your animals will be able to walk underneath it, uh, particularly like if they can get... Um, like if you put an overpass like this right here, if my rhinos could get back here, they could get underneath the barrier. That will alert the zoo that a dangerous animal has escaped and the guests will react as if the animal is running around the path completely un, um, completely unchecked. So be mindful of where you're putting your barriers and how you're modifying your terrain because your animals will get salty uh, and just move wherever they want and your guests will freak out. So I'll make this area dirt. Actually, you know, I like the way the light soil looks along the top of this here. Okay. So for guests, now we go to path. Let's find a nice path. What do you think? Mmm. Mmm. What are we thinking? Block path? That just doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. We'll, we'll extend that to 7 meters and we will go into settings and we will hit snap to barrier. Snap alongside barriers is already on. Perfect. Click here. And you'll be able to curve it directly along the edge of your barrier. And we'll just do a janky job of... Oh! You got the pathing in this game. Janky job of putting it along there. Um... Like it's no big deal. 
So our rhinos are on the way in right now. As always, we forgot to put food in because I don't know why I focus on the way it looks so much. We just forget to feed them, which is not good. Don't forget to feed your animals as a keeper. It's not a good thing. We will put that in. We will put a water pipe back here. Again, a little redundant. I don't know why that's been the theme with this zoo. Uh, the food cage actually does look kind of cool, so we'll stick that back there too. Go into enrichment items, and we will search Rhino. We'll give them something to do here. We'll put that in. Put some sprinklers in to cool this area down a little bit, even though, again, I'm thinking they're going to want it warmer. Rubbing pillar. I really like this thing. It really highlights the strength of some of these animals. I think that's super cool. And I think a mud bath is appropriate. So our animals have arrived. Let's see what they think. Their enrichment is not great, but we're working on that. Environment coverage is good. Oh, black poplar tree. I don't know how that slid in there, but okay. Or terrain. Not enough long grass and a little too much soil. So we overshot the long grass thing a little bit. That's okay. That'll be, that is a mistake you're going to make um, when playing this game for sure. And that's perfectly fine. So as I figured, they didn't want a ton of plants. Temperate, grassland, continent, Asia, not, not Europe. See, baobab trees don't seem like the move. I don't like the way that looks in there, to be honest. Put a couple of those in. So they don't have enough shelter at the moment. Uh, what are they missing in habitat? Yeah, they don't have enough hard shelter because this was not enough for two very large rhinos. We should have seen that coming. And this should be more than large enough for them here. Put that in. What do they think? Boom. Hard shelter's back up. We will stick some uh, sleeping beds in there, some hay beds for them. Just so it's a little more comfortable than laying on long grass. Because I was recently uh, talking to someone who works at Frontier, funny enough, they popped into a Twitch stream I was watching, and we were discussing how, like, every animal in the game absolutely just, like, hates long grass, it seems like. And uh, the person brought up the point of, like, if you were sleeping, do you really want long grass to be poking you all the time? And we're like, well, no, we didn't even think about that. So that's one of the reasons why. So then you add a little bit more enrichment for them, and then we should be good. They're probably going to want food enrichment, figured. So, at the Detroit Zoo, which is the one I frequent the most, the rhinoceros there, they have a lot of barrels and, like, big, large, like, you know, rubber balls and things like that. They've got tires everywhere. So I like that aesthetic of, like, you know, these large industrial bins that these rhinos can just kick around like it's nothing. So we have the things for our guests to use. And now we're going to make this look just a little bit nicer. And we're going to do a lot like we did with the wolves, and we're going to border this path with um, with some plants. So we'll go over here, lower it, move it in. Placing plants around a fence or around a path is a bit of a laborious process. So once again, be patient, and it will look very, very, very nice. All right, so there we have it. Now we have bordered with these hawthorn bush or blackthorn bushes, a lot like what we used over in the guest area. It is leaching onto the path a little bit, which I actually kind of like. I like the fact that it looks a little overgrown in this uh, in this area. However, this will affect the overall plant coverage for the animals. So let's make sure that's good. Doesn't affect it too much. You will see some of it is inside the exhibit here. Actually, all of it's inside the exhibit. That's okay. But again, something to be mindful of. So there you have it, folks. An exhibit with no fences that you can adapt to pretty much any animal in the game. I hope you guys learned something today. And if you want to see me make more awesome habitats, uh, possibly without fences, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'm super excited for the South America pack that is coming out next week. So 
definitely be on the lookout for more content once that comes out. I am very excited to use the new scenery tools and create new animals. I know everyone's hyped for the Jaguar, but honestly, I'm here for the giant anteater. I really, I cannot wait for the huge DLC and the huge patch that's coming. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day, and thank you for watching. Guys, we're idiots. We're idiots. We had the wrong food thing in. We put one of the flat arboreal things in for like, I think like lemurs eat off them. Not even thinking that like that would not make sense for them. Same thing with this food cage over here. It's way too tall. So great job, team. We're we're really good at playing a zoo. We love it.